going on guys? Today's video is going to be a walkthrough of our 2010 Sundancer 310 made by Sea Ray Boats. If you've been to Orange County, especially Newport Beach, then you might know what's behind me, Billy's at the Beach. Basically the best place to be on the water as well as get some awesome cocktails, Mai Tais, kind of tropical drinks, things of that nature. I wanted to just show you guys where the boat currently sits, give you guys kind of a walkthrough and what it's like to be here at Billy's in Newport, then go through the boat a little bit and show you guys around. So let's do it. This part gets me a little bit because the sign they sell seafood, steaks, as well as poo poos, I guess, which is interesting. Never have one of those. All right, so as you guys can see, there's some crazy boats down here. This is probably the biggest, actually it is the biggest. This is a 52 foot absolute fly, which means it has a fly bridge on top. Probably the second biggest is the Sunder, Sundancer 55, called Valkyrie. It's a 475, four winds. This is a prestige 460 fly. This also has a fly bridge up top. And then this is our 310 Sundancer. I'm just gonna continue to show you around a little bit. There's some awesome boats down here um, at this time. So I wanted to kind of give you a little rundown. These are the Van Dutches behind me. Super unique boat. You don't really see a ton of these. It's a 2021 43 Van Dutch. Um, I'll take you guys around there so we can see it a little closer. This is one of the only two, there's two 55 foot Van Dutches in Newport Harbor. This is one of them. This is called Traffic. It's a large boat. Um, this is an 80 foot slip and this is a 55 foot boat so it kind of gives you an idea of how large it is. Down here might as well show you guys around a little bit behind me is louis at the bay make a reservation it's do walk-ins but it's a little bit harder to get in but awesome food billy's is uh i wouldn't say the food's like the absolute best you're gonna have but it is the best on the water boats can come in you saw on the way in there's a big area where boats can pull in kind of dock up um, they usually have deck hands there to kind of help you get into the slips all right so we're back uh into the little billy's area here but this is actually gonna be a sea ray sdx uh pretty new Got some tire speakers, pretty cool. This is actually a slightly older Van Dutch 40. Skyfall, super cool name. And then you have Billy's behind it. And this is the area, obviously, you can pull your boat into. Um, if you want to dock up at Billy's, have a drink, get some food. 
So actually not to uh, put anyone on blast, but a couple weeks ago, there was a sailboat, similar size actually to one that's kind of out there if you just saw this guy over here. So we saw him backing in here and it's a you know, pretty good sized sailboat over 40 feet. And he was able to park right here. And little did he know that the tide would be going out really <laughs> very shortly. So I have a picture actually of the mast almost touching like the top of the building. So not to put that guy in blast, but I'm gonna put a little, uh, I think I have a video of it. I'll put a video of it right now so you can check that out. And now that it drops five feet, he's, yeah, look how loose. Just be careful of the tides because they will get you in a bind that you can't get out of. But without further ado, let's jump on the 310, show you guys around. We're gonna start with the exterior of the boat. In Newport, it's been raining the last couple days. It's the winter right now. Uh, I laugh because being from Colorado, this definitely is not our winter, but I'm very grateful. Uh, but you get all this storm drain runoff. It just collects in the slips um, that the wind brings in. Pretty nasty. It's the exterior of the 310. You have two storage compartments down here. Uh, you do have a rear audio controller as well. That's stock. Here's where all your shore power as well as your TV. So you two shore power outlets. You do have a TV hookup um, as well as, let's see, breakers. Two breakers and then it looks like water. And then you do have a fresh water outlet as well to pump out the tank. These are two storage. Oh, we got some uh, radio feedback. So two just general compartments. They do wash out so you can keep ropes or fenders, whatever. We typically keep our fenders in here. This is another storage. Let me actually go 0.5 for you guys. So we keep our storage, or our fenders and our lines in here. It's your transom shower. Don't really use this too much, but it's there. Tie down obviously here. This is the starboard right side of the boat. This is actually gonna be your pump out right here. So that's where you hook up the uh, the pump to to get all your wastewater out, your black water. The air conditioning unit, actually the outlet for the water cooling system pumps out here. So sometimes if you have the AC on, you gotta be careful that your fender doesn't um, block that port. This is the window for the head. This is the front window um, in the cabin area. Obviously we have nav light. Um, we'll hop on, I'll show you guys the anchor and everything like that, the windless controls as well as the spotlight. Um, but that's pretty much it for the front. Let's come up the side. Up top we have radar, the Raymarine radar, obviously our anchor light, a couple other things. We do have a TV antenna as well. And then obviously you have your um, VHF, your radio antenna right there. And then this is just the engine exhaust that has a grill there. Walking around the boat to the other side. Doo -doo -doo. So the fuel is actually this one right here. Um, and then the fresh water fill is gonna be on the front of the boat, on the tip, um, the bow, if you will. I'll show you guys that as well. So more engine uh, exhaust grates here, more kind of, you have a cleat there, side cleat as well for tying up. And then we have the bimini that extends pretty much all the way up to the back, uh, which is a swim ladder as well. It's kind of hard to see with all the crap into there. Step on the boat, it does have a sink. Obviously it runs fresh water. I'm not sure if the, yeah, the water's turned on. So that's connected to fresh water, obviously. Um, and then it just drains. I don't know if you heard that. Drains out the side there. So I'd be wary putting soda, anything like that into here because it's just going to drain down the side of the boat. This is actually a grill. We have had to replace this fire extinguisher. Just this, this is a top side fire extinguisher in the cockpit. It's good to have. Obviously it's required as well. Um, do you have two plugins here? So these are only going to work, obviously, if you're connected to shore power or if your generator is running underway. Um, those won't work if you're just on the battery power. Down here is a fridge um, built in. It's awesome to have. It does have a little freezer section as well. And this pops up actually a little cutting board. You can uh, stand and kind of hold it here. So that's cool. It's just storage for keep some towels down there. There's a little trash can as well. Nice to have that. Under the seat is more storage. We keep pretty much all the life jackets, throwable, type fours, all that stuff. Um, I think there's about 13 down there, so it can fit quite a bit of stuff. This is uh, just a little table for the cockpit area back here. 
nice wood table. This arm sometimes gets stuck, just kind of pull it pretty hard and it pops out of there. It's one annoying thing, I think on the newer models, the tables and whatnot, table legs usually are on a hydraulic system so they can pull themselves up or down. Just kind of an outdated um, system, just having everything pop apart. Obviously this pops off, this, um, and I'll show you guys where to store that as well. You have a little storage area here. We just keep a bunch of random stuff, pumps, whatnot in here. Just a drawer. This is for a cooler, one of those standard igloo coolers. Most Sea Rays can fit these in a little storage here. It's nice if you want to bring, take it off the boat, fill it with ice, bring it back on, whatever. We step up here to the helm. Um, this seat, so this seat back actually flips, and then it can orientate this way as well. It also pivots, so you can angle it, so you can kind of face this way, um, talk to your guests and whatnot. Pretty cool feature. So, clean up to the helm. This is the helm area. VHF radio, you do have your speaker here. The switches here, you have horn, cockpit, bilge, spoiler. I'll go through these just so you kind of know. Um, cockpit lights, these are just um, these little running lights um, see in like a movie theater or whatever, just kind of along the floor, just to illuminate where you're walking. This is a bilge light, so this is gonna be a light um, down in the bilge of the boat. Boiler, this is gonna be your top light, so this is gonna be these guys running across this hard arch here. Anchor light. Um, it's gonna be your top light running is gonna be all your nav lights. Wiper is gonna be obviously your windshield wiper there. Your windlass, um, this is the activation windlass switch. So you just tap that and that'll kick on the windlass system and then you have up and down and you can control it from here. Obviously there's controls up there as well, uh, but the captain can do it. An accessory, this is for, uh, we have underwater lights tied up to that. Uh, so that's, but you can obviously wire that for whatever. This is gonna be a joystick, the Axis system. So I think, t as far as I know, 2010 was the first year that they had the joystick system in the Sea Ray boats. So this, you're able to, obviously you have your just standard uh, throttle controls. So obviously this is your port side uh, engine. This is your starboard side engine. And you know, forward is forward. This is neutral position and then reverse is reverse. You can spin the boat, obviously 180, 360. I'm um, using these alone, or you can just click over, click dock right here. Here's a kind of zoomed in. Obviously you have trim control as well on the panel or on the uh, port stick. And then here's your controls here. You can click dock, you can switch it over here. And that's pretty much how, especially in this slip, a little bit tight um, since we share it with this big guy here. So having the joystick is makes it really easy, honestly at night, um, if there's a heavy wind, it, it just makes life way easier, especially on this boat. Any boat over you know 30 feet, if you only have a single engine, it's a little, you know, obviously the better captain you are, the better you are driving, um, it's no big deal. But when you're pulling in a tight spot, especially with, you know, expensive boats and things that you're <laughs> worried about, maybe you don't want to uh, hit or even touch, uh, obviously that's a huge asset to have. Uh, so moving up to the axis. So this is part of that same system. Um, it does have a sky hook. That'll basically, it's a virtual anchor. So if you've seen, there's better videos on sky hook, but it'll hold the boat in a uh, position. Um, so if you enable sky hook, uh, it'll keep the boat so it'll give it thrust for forward um, or reverse just to keep you in the same spot without having to put your anchor down so the engines are running so you wouldn't swim obviously with the sky hook enabled because uh, engines are running but you have the option for the sky hook auto heading this is just a uh, sort of autopilot it'll just keep your heading and then you use these left and right arrows to kind of keep the uh position that you want or the heading that you want emergency start switch so this actually there's four batteries on board there's two port and two starboard the emergency start button actually bridges the battery, so it'll act with all four batteries. So if you're having uh, low voltage on any of the batteries, you can use uh, emergency start, and it'll give you the power you need to get the engine started, which is really nice. I've had to use this a couple times. When we were offshore power or just random things came up, they were draining the battery. Trim tabs, so these are the uh, trim tabs that are obviously beneath the boat uh, on the left and right sides, and then you can control. Really the only time you're gonna use these, at least in my experience, is where the boat is pretty heavily tilted um, when you have passengers on the left or right side. And let's say we're going down the coast and the boat's leaning this way. Uh, I'm just gonna basically mess with my trim tab so that it levels the boat out and it keeps us on a more level plane. Bilge pump, or sorry, bilge blower, which is just a fan in the engine hatch. The bilge pump, which pumps the lower bilge from the engine hatch and then this is the hatch lift so hatch lift i'll show you guys that in a sec but that's going to lift the entire hatch which basically runs the entire length so i usually take the table down and take the soft cushion out 
um, and lift this up and out. Additionally, there is a control panel which under here, which I'll show you guys once we get into the engine hatch. Uh, and that's got some more uh, switches as well as the main control panel downstairs. This is a Raymarine system. This can be a radar as well as it's got depth finder, all that jazz. And then this is your vessel view. Smartcraft, this is actually tied to the engine. So this will show you engine RPM, heading, um, fuel, all the kind of main things you need in addition to um, your standard gauges, RPM, so your engine, tachometer. This is just various pressure gauges. I don't know if you can see in there trim position, battery voltage, miles per hour, same thing, but this is obviously for the starboard engine. This is reading the port engine. And then you have your fuel, which that's not accurate because the boat's not on door. <laughs> um, we did install this USB port, kind of cool. So this is just gonna pull power from batteries. Um, you can plug in your iPhone while being up here, which is nice. Otherwise you're gonna have to pretty much plug in. There's a 12 volt receptacle downstairs or plug into these guys, like I said, only work on altern or on generator power or short power. Additionally, down here, little storage compartment, as well as the fire suppression system in the engine hatch. So pull that, and then in case of an emergency, obviously that um, pulls the t uh, pin for the massive fire extinguisher in the engine hatch, which will extinguish everything in the engine hatch. Getting back, obviously you have your standard compass here, and then we did put a fusion head unit. This um, is kind of a patch because uh, the old head, head unit was a Sony and it was quite a bit bigger but we are went to a fusion model, which is actually wireless, which is kind of crazy. Um, so you can take this around the boat and adjust the music and whatnot. But this is attached to the new fusion head unit, which I'll show you in a few minutes. But I think that's it. The only other thing I didn't cover is the spotlight it has spot, flood. Spot is obviously a smaller, um, a smaller beam of light, flood, larger, and then off. And then you can actually move, see if, see the spotlight on the front. Um, it's off right now. So anyway, I'll show you that when we fire the boat up. All right, so now let's go up to the front of the boat onto the bow. I'll show you guys, obviously there's just a central walkway here. This windshield is open right now. So super easy to walk on. It is pretty good grip. Um, I've never slipped or anything like that. Knock on wood. <laughs> Do have a large window here. Some of the newer Sundancers are even older. This is maybe one of the only years that they had this massive glass panel. Um, and I understand why, because it's kind of annoying when people are sitting out here to kind of navigate around this. Obviously you can step on it i'm not worried about it just shattering or breaking through but it's not a habit i would get into of obviously stepping on it over and over again this opens up and you can keep it open or closed and then moving up this is your fresh water fill right here it takes about 25 to 30 gallons i believe uh which takes quite a bit um out of the hose so that takes a little while to fill you have your cleat a spotlight you have your windless controls up and down um sorry about my shoes there and then this is going to be your anchor so this is obviously a safety pin um this is your leash which isn't even on right now but there you have it and then this is the um, wrench that you can loosen this with and then it just allows you to move the anchor chain up and down manually and then this opens so you can see it there and that's just going to be uh, power controls for the windlass itself so All right, here's a better view of up top. You see the same thing, just a different angle. TV antenna, mercury antenna, obviously your radar right here. Um, this has, this is just a radome. This has a spinning radar mechanism inside of it. Then you have your nav light up top. I think that's it for the exterior guys. Um, let's head downstairs and I'll show you guys the cabin. So headed down into the cabin here, you do have two stairs. This is a subwoofer right here. And then typically there's a, a screen door here as well. So you'd have this door, which has a latch on the back of it, and as well as a little clip there. So this is when it's closed, it closes like this, this comes down, and this allows it to lock right there, boom. Then you can lock it here. So obviously no one can go in and out of the cabin without the key. Um, when you wanna open it, see if I can do this one-handed, that pops up, boom, boom. And then yeah, this latch is in the back here, it clips hold itself in place so moving down this does it drain so just like you can see there's a ton of rainwater in here it'll drain out there coming down into the cabin storage area up top um, this opens up this is a table storage and storage for the uh, table legs as well there's one step here left side uh, you do have your microwave that's pretty high you have more storage up top here there's the head right here which i'll show you port side window you do have storage up here which is cool 
So this is actually a curtain to make this a little bit more private. So this table can drop down onto a smaller table leg. Um, that table leg is actually stored in that initial cabinet you saw back here. It's actually right there. So this drops down and then you can actually use filler cushions. So imagine this about a foot lower and the filler cushion set in there. So this is this whole area turns into a bed. It's pretty good size. I'm six feet tall and I basically take up, I mean a majority, but for two people it wouldn't be bad. You could sleep, um, do an overnight wherever, um, sleep in the slip. Wouldn't be too bad at all. Uh, over here is TV. To be honest, never use a TV, um, but below it is the sound system. Uh, we did put this new fusion unit in. This is an MSRA70. It's worked great so far. Uh, we had to take out the old Sony unit, which was kind of jimmy rigged. Originally the Sony unit didn't have Bluetooth, so they added a Bluetooth adapter, which ended up, uh, it just the range wasn't very good and it started cutting out. So we replaced it with the fusion, which helped. Uh, it's been a lot better. This is the aux input. You do have a DVD player right here, which we've never used, but you can use that as well. If you guys are wondering what this is, it's just a dehumidifier unit. So it just pulls the um, humidity or the you know the water vapor out of the air that's in here. It keeps it smelling nice and dry. You do have a little stovetop um, little burner there, which is nice if you want to do some cooking. That in combination with the grill, it is pretty easy to cook on this thing. Then you have another power outlet right here. This is obviously standard, just 110, and then you do have a 12 volt. So um, right now it's connected to shore power, so we're able to run this um, just on the outlets, obviously, but running anything on the 12 volt on battery power, if the boat was just fired up, we could run this. We'd have to fire up the generator to run the plugs and the microwave. There's a carbon monoxide detector right here. And then on the back side, which is everyone seems to miss, there's a couple different control panels as well. It's a light switch up top. To the right is um, a little sound controller for the TV. Left is a switch between the TV and the stereo. So sometimes these front speakers uh, won't, I can't, you know, you won't be able to hear any music in the cabin. And the reason that is, is because this sometimes gets flipped um, over to TV. So you just kind of flip the back stereo and then you got the old yellow, white, red um, uh, inputs there for the TV, so. Two front lights, obviously me right there. This is the hatch, so um, if you wanna go up on the bow, you can hit the hatch. This is the massive skylight we saw from up top. It does have a visor that closes there. Um, and that one has a visor as well that comes up. It's down here is, you have four uh, cabinets like this running all the way around. So one, two, three, and four. Those are a ton of space. Honestly, this boat has a ton of space in general, but you can use those, utilize those. This is actually a controller for the um, HVAC. We're doing some repairs right now, but this is the HVAC controller. It just sits in this hole right there. Um, and that allows you to, this boat does have air conditioning, which comes out this hole right here, as well as heat. So it's been cold in Newport um, last couple of days. So we actually just used the heater yesterday when we were hanging out down here. The AC is great in the summer. So when you're out, we like to go to Emerald Bay or wherever you're anchored out, you can use the um, air conditioning, keep it cool in here. If it's too hot up top, so people can relax down here. It's an nice, awesome feature. More storage uh, here, really nice. There we go, same thing. This is, um, actually at this point, we still have all the manuals and everything that we keep up here, so. This is just another seating area, I'll show you guys. Um, there's another little drawer here, we keep stuff in. The nice thing about this boat is there's not a ton of carpet. The only carpet is kind of on the trim areas here, which is nice because as you know, carpet gets mildewy and, and a little bit more carpet there. It gets mildewy and, and wet and stinky. Um, having the hardwood down here is a lot better from my experience, um, which we're really grateful for. I'll show you guys over here real quick. So this is just gonna be another fire extinguisher, trash can, as well as access to the sink, the bottom side of the sink. And then this is going to be another fridge about the same size as the one in the cockpit outside so there's that back over here so this is going to be your main panel so your main control panel so i don't know if you guys have ever seen one of these before i'm just going to do a quick run through um this is your generator so if you have a Kohler, this has a Kohler generator unit it currently has 206 and a half hours on it this is just remote control for that so you start the generator instead of being in the engine hatch obviously you can start from up here um, these are going to be your master uh, engine ignition. So there's just your engine power um, switches. So if we were to fire it up, turn both those on. This is another bilge blower switch. You can use that, the one at the helm or the one here. Take it from the top down. So this is going to be your 120 volt section here. This is how you um, choose if you want to pull your power from shore power or the generator. 
So right now it's connected or configured to pull from the shore power. So if I were to turn these off, um, you'll see my voltage drop here. AC volts, if I power back up, and you just heard the dehumidifier go off because I just pulled the power. So that takes you up to 110 coming from the shore power. If I drop that off, drop this off, move these over, that's gonna allow you to, if we were had the generator running, that allow us to pull the power from the generator. Um, so we'd obviously have to start the generator, which is just mode, start, and then mode again. That'll kick your generator up, and then you click on, on, and then that allows you basically to run everything above this 12 volt line up. That's why they configure it like this, or, or lay it out like this, is because when you're on shore power, move this back over, so now we're pulling power from the plugs, um, obviously on the dock. That allows you to run everything north of this, this white line here. So you can run the microwave now, um, water heater, um, outlets, fridge, battery charger, stove, air conditioner, cockpit grill. The only way you can use these is from shore power or generator. Everything below this line is gonna run off your battery. So cabin lights, fridge, fresh water pump, 12 volt receptacle. Um, you can add another uh, switch for any accessories, two and three. And then your sound system, head uh, system as well. Something we noticed when we were rewiring the new head unit, um, you do, to have your stereo, you do need your stereo on as well as this 12 volt receptacle. There's some sort of connect between the stereo system um, switch as well as 12 volt receptacle. So uh, if you're having issues with that, go ahead and, and use them both at the same time. If you're having any wiring issues, your head unit won't boot up or something like that. I believe you have a reset for the mid cam and TV. And that's pretty much it for the control panel. So when you show up to the boat and the boat is dead or you know turn off um, or just on shore power this is where i come first and basically turn on everything below this line to get the boat you know turned on and then turn the engine switches over which i'll do that as well um, hear a beep and then we'll go back up top and i'll start the engines for you guys um, but first there's uh the head down here as well I have a nice mirror hey guys mirror there we did put this little soap dispenser. I think it's better than just having a soap little pump here that slides around and a ton of stuff. So kind of nice little feature. This has obviously the window as well. Sink, a little mat. We keep the, there's toilet paper and toilet paper holder down in here. Um, so those cabinets fold down, utilize that. We have a trash. Obviously the foot pump for the toilet is on that. It's just a standard kind of vacuum toilet, you know, similar to what you see on an airplane. You do have your waste system um, switch right there. So if we were to pump out, and well, if we're anytime we're using the toilet for that and you need the vacuum um, to power it, obviously you just turn this all the way to the right and this slides up. You'll see power right there. If it had black water or waste in it, it would show a, a level as well. So if it was half full, the waste tank was half full, it would show you one half right here as well. So that's it for the head. Um, this actually pulls towards you as well. A little mess of cabinet. Um, you can configure this for a shower so you can pull this out and and put it right here and then you can turn the water on and it acts kind of as a shower head and then it will drain out there's a drain back here and then you know obviously if you were staying on the boat you could use that as a shower i've never done it but it's available uh then down here so basically this is facing back towards the back of the boat a couple different things you can do down here so um we utilize this as a storage area so we have a couple different seats just drill a bunch of life jackets and whatnot and then back there we have some different stuff as well but it's a pretty big area. So from the front here um, to the back, probably about three and a half feet. There's another configuration, it does have lights and outlet, as well as you see this little area up here, that's under the helm seat. So you can actually open that. And then if you're sleeping down here, it'd be for, you know, obviously you can use that as a vent. The other configuration, instead of using this as storage, clear all this out. Um, some of them have a, uh, this is just wood right here, but you can do a, a mattress pad. So you can have a mattress pad and you can sleep two people down here as well. That's the secondary configuration if you didn't want to use this just for a bunch of storage like we do. Um, and it's easily, you know, from here to here is probably only about four feet, uh, but then your feet would just be under there. And it's taller back there, if you can see. So you can sleep back there, no problem. So uh, all in all, the boat can fit about two people sleeping here, two people sleeping here. I would say it's probably good for like a two couples, like overnight, I wouldn't do, or maybe some kids, I wouldn't do, you know, like six people sleeping on this thing. I don't think you really could, unless people want to sleep out back with the bugs and stuff. But I think that's it for the cabin area. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open the engine hatch and show you guys in the hatch, show you the engines. I'm gonna show you guys how to open the engine hatch. It's just this hatch lift button, you gotta keep this up. Um, I've already removed the cushion, which you can see right there, which bridges those two seats. Hear it squeaking up here. Just gotta remove this cushion, and then there's two buttons back here on the carpet that you gotta undo, but otherwise it comes right up. Obviously I took the table out as well. 
All right, guys, there you have it. Hatch is open. I believe this is your fresh water system down here. You see a couple uh, intakes, wa uh, water intakes. This is just for their various systems. These are little filters right here. So these pull water out of the, the sea. This is your starboard engine right here. You do have two batteries behind it. These are five liter Mercury uh, V8s. Um, you see the Axis C-Core system branding on the top cover there. Pretty standard, see the oil filter up top. Gear lube bottle right here. Um, this is steering fluid right here. Obviously there's that. This is for trim tabs. See that hydraulic little hydraulic system there. Fire extinguisher, that's fire suppression system. Moving over here, this is the port side engine. You see behind it, uh, that is actually for the trim control on the outdrives. Um, see right in the middle there, I'll point it out. And then it's just various electronics. Sorry if you hear that radio in the background. Two more batteries over here. This boat has four batteries, two over here and two here. If you use that button on the helm, emergency start, that'll kick, that'll bridge all four together, um, allow you to use full voltage from all four. These are actually the house batteries, so anything you use on the boat is gonna pull from these. So these will be the first to die um, if you leave something on or whatnot. You have a couple different breakers above those and battery cable. Below me is actually the Kohler generator. So my Kohler 5 VKD generator system, standard generator, but we were having an under voltage issue where it would start up for about 10 seconds and it just boom, die down. Um, so we reset the uh, output settings of the voltage uh, and that seemed to fix it. So now it's running fine, it starts up. I can start it from here or that controller downstairs that you saw. Um, and behind that is just some uh, fire suppression padding and then uh, that's the fresh water tank um, and that's pretty much it guys just wanted to show you that here's a better view since we're down here here's a better view of that's the hydraulic pump system for the drives and then over here this is the hydraulic pump system for the trim tabs and then you can see your steering uh, I don't know what you call those steering axles, I guess, something like that. So I believe this is the waste tank here um, for the black water there. And then behind me is the fresh water with the blue tubing. Then you got bilge pumps and obviously the hydraulic arm to keep the hatch up. A little bit of um, corrosion around the headers uh, and the, the risers there. Uh, but this is kind of the, you know, the standard wear and tear for 11 year olds. These batteries are brand new. We did just do those. This is a 10, 11 year old boat. This is a 2010, obviously 310 Sundancer. This is the kind of wear and tear that you're going to see. You know, we take really good care of the interior. Uh, we're always replacing, you know, little bulbs that, light bulbs that burn out, uh, any trim pieces that need to be uh, reattached or just, you know, little things. We take really good care of the bimini, obviously speaker system, all that jazz. But this is the wear and tear in the engine bay that you're gonna see. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. I'll go ahead and get back to the helm, fire them up for you. All right, so I'm in neutral. You can see that two red lights. Um, go ahead and fire. This is the um, port side start, starboard start. Hit the port first. the RPM coming up there. And, uh, we have a non-critical fault that's just, it's been on there since we've had it, but if you're a uh, Mercury, Mercruiser or mechanic, let me know what you, if you've seen that before, drop it in the comments for me. Um, port engine started, let's rock the starboard. Obviously, much more manageable uh, exhaust sounds or just engine running sounds. So, I'll put this cushion back and then just show you guys when you open the engine hatch, these two buttons right here on the carpet are going to get stuck and make sure this door is uh, locked open as well. So, lock, gotta lock that. Um, don't let it bounce around because the engine hatch will hit it. So, lock that back there and then just undo these two and then it'll come right up. Obviously, take the table out, 
take the cushion off, hatch opens fully. But there's kind of the exhaust note from the rear. Alright guys, you've seen the 310 Sundancer, you've done the walk around, you've seen Billy's at the beach, you've checked out all these awesome boats around here. If you like the video, please drop us a like. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're interested. There's going to be probably a couple more boat videos as well as a ton of car videos going into this new year. Thank you so much for watching. If you've had experience with uh, a Sundancer like this, please drop a comment below. Uh, as a community of Sea Ray owners, we all got to stick together because there's so many problems with these things. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to build a little uh, dialogue around them, help each other out. So without further ado, I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video.